So we got a lot of questions about how do we get employee level details in Practice IQ uh, while working with QuickBooks Online and uh, with an external payroll service. And you see the problem there is that when an external payroll service is run, you don't enter the payroll level details, you don't run your checks through QuickBooks Online, and you make one single entry, which is, which is a large number, and it doesn't translate into employee level details. But there's a way around it, and I'm gonna show you how to get that detail. And the detail that we're talking about is right here. So here's what where people are interested in is not just looking at your overheads by account. So in this particular case, if I dig into laboratory, it goes to the next level and shows where the different laboratories, uh, which different laboratories are being used. But at the same time, people want to be able to drill into your payroll expenses down to the employee level. And that's, that's a pretty cool tool to have. So for example, in this particular case, if I click on payroll expense, it goes down to the staff salaries plus payroll taxes. Now, if I click one more level, it will go down to the individual employee level. And why is that important? So that you can do prof provider profitability analysis on each provider. And if I click further, it can go further deep inside into their uh, Okay, so what do, we do we have, what do we have to do to make that happen? First thing, we have to make sure that every single employee that's in your practice management system is actually entered as an employee in your QuickBooks Online account. So if I look into the QuickBooks Online account for this practice, I want to see every single employee that I'm paying to actually have an employee profile because we will be using this to map this employee in the practice management system. So once you make sure all of these employees exist in your QuickBooks online account, you go back into your practice management system, and here we're going to go ahead and click into their settings tab. From there, I will click into employees, and let's go ahead and hit next. Now, this will bring up a, a page that'll show you all of the users on the practice management side. Okay, so these are the names of the people that are on the, on the actually practice IQ side. All of this stuff is coming in from your practice management, so you are quick from your EagleSoft, from your Open Dental uh, Dentrix, and these are the employees coming in from QuickBooks. Now, if I click on one of these items, you will see there's more than one item right here. And so it's a, it's a one-to-many mapping. So you can have one practice IQ user map to multiple uh, practice management users. And the same thing, if you, let's say, pay uh, uh, an employee in two different ways under two different names or uh, two different accounts or whatever it might be, you could have a one-to-many mapping, though that's very unlikely scenario. It's likely that you would you may have two different providers under the same name that you track differently, but QuickBooks, you'll probably have only one person. Once you have mapped all your practice management employees into you, all the QuickBooks online employees, then I have to show you how do you make a journal entry. And this is this information is important for your bookkeeper and show this video to them. It's a pretty simple thing to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you right now. All right, so here, when you are making a journal entry, let's say a payroll expense of uh, $20,000 was uh, paid out of, let's say, a bank account uh, for, uh, let's say, this Bank of America account, and there was a debit made out of $20,000. And we're gonna make that, and so it stays, as a debit on this side, and now when I'm going to make this journal entry and I'm going to offset that other account, instead of making this one huge journal entry for the, all of the payroll, what I will be doing is I will say payroll, let's say payroll expenses, I'm gonna find that particular, uh, let's say payroll expenses, payroll employees, or salaries and wages, for example. I'm not making a $10,000, let's say I make an $8,000 entry here. And in this particular case, I will say this is for the employee or the other one. And I'm going to make another entry saying 
taxes, and these are, let's say, payroll taxes employees. This is going to be another $2,000, and I'm going to make it against the same employee. So you follow this paradigm. The most important aspect here is making sure the name of the employee is attached to each and every journal entry. So in this case, let's say you have 10 employees, and all 10 of them get paid $2,000 each for $200 of, of payroll taxes and any other FUTA and uh, FICA and FUTA that you want to include in here, they all get mapped into individual employees. So instead of making a journal entry that's one debit and one credit, you're making one large debit and multiple small credits. Hope this makes sense. Uh, if not, you can always give us a call and we can help you.